Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's uh, 10 a.m. here in uh, Melbourne, Australia, and it's uh, about uh, 8 15 p.m. Uh, in uh, uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, United States, and uh, that's where I'm being joined by a uh, good brother, a friend of mine, uh, Pastor Michael Sakwe. Uh, Pastor Mike, it's been a long time that we've caught <laughs> up on the. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How are you doing, Pastor Mike? How is everything going with you? How is, yeah, yeah. Everything is going on well by the grace of God. Uh, mm. believe, believe in God. I mean, uh, in, the, in the face of adversity, the yes. Bible encourages us to, you know, to believe God, to believe Him, you know. So even though at the moment things are like it's, it's, it's going the other way, but we believe that God is in control. So I should say everything is going on well by the Amen. grace of God. Amen. Um, Amen. Mm. Mike, I've known you for a very long time, I think probably over 20 years or so, now, and uh, we've had some mm. wonderful times in Malta, in Libya. Yeah, yeah. So good to us. But let's hear a little bit about Pastor Mike's testimony. How did you come to know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Uh, it happened uh, uh, years back. Uh, <laughs> If I if I begin to think, I probably will not even remember the year. Wow. But uh, it's been it's been uh, quite quite some time. I would say probably in the past uh, uh, thirty years or so, you know, that I came to the Lord. Um, uh, it it so happened that on this on a very faithful day, um, I had you know been out to work. I went out to work and uh, I came back home. I was. Um, I was really in a in a in a state of uh, uh, depression. I was depressed. I was confused. Um, there was no direction, um, and all because you know uh, my bad because of my background, especially because my parents were not together. You know, my father lived far away, and my mom was you know. So I stayed with my mom for quite a while, and I would go stay with my dad for quite a while. So I was like, it was like being. <laughs> One from okay. one place to another, yes. you know. So because of that, I didn't have a specific focus. There was no direction, mm. as a matter of fact. So um, uh, it kept on like that for quite a while. I tried to, you know, do things on my own. I tried to break out on my own to see if I can, you know, put things together. Even though I was praying, I did not have any sense of direction in prayer. I was just I was just praying the Psalms, even without knowing what the Psalms were about. I would just read them like you, we, <laughs> we read books mm. and all that. So, but it so happened that on this very day, um, I came back home, I sat down, and you know, I was thinking like, okay, where, where am I going? What, where, where is my direction in life? What mm. am I supposed to be doing right now? You mm. know, things are not working out. Things are not going the right way. The place where I work, I think uh, I had, you know, lost the job. I lost the job in that very place within that same week. So when I got home, I did not tell my mom that I've lost my job. My mom actually heard it <laughs> from the man himself, the owner of the, the company, that, <laughs> you know, that I lost the job. So I tried to do things on my own without even telling my mother and all that. But it so happened on this that I came home, the TV was on, and uh um, I picked up the remote, I started flipping the TV, and I got stuck on one particular Christian channel. And on that channel, it was uh, Ayo Reset Jaffa who was preaching on that day. And the message was on, and the, 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 the dress, the cloth that Ayo Reset Jaffa wore that day, it shone, it shone brighter than white. It was wearing a white, but I was seeing something that is not white. It was brighter than white. Like, wow. you know, when somebody's wearing a white, you say this is a yeah. white shirt. But yes. this shirt, this dress, cloth I saw him wear that day when he was ministering was, was brighter. It was shinier than ever. So, mm -hmm. and that thing became a center of attraction. I'm like, what, what, who is this person? I've never yeah. heard of this man before. Yeah. Who is this man? And yeah. that caught my attention. So I was listening. And uh, as he was preaching, he was preaching with, with vigor. He was preaching powerfully that day. And he, he started mentioning one word that I'd never ever heard before in my life. He started mentioning supernatural. You can live a supernatural life. 
Mm. Your life will be transformed. Mm. The supernatural life that, you know, that is of God, is of, you know, and he started that word, yes. that word alone caught my heart. And as he was ministering, I didn't hear any other thing he was saying. I yes. was hearing supernatural. I can live a supernatural life. I can live a supernatural life. He kept on hitting me, hitting me. And on that day, he said, you watching me on the TV. I felt he was talking to me. He said, wow. you watching me on the TV right now, you know, your life can be transformed. Your life can. So he started and he went on. He said, I want you to join me in prayer. Go down on your knees right, right. now and receive the Lord. I didn't waste time. I didn't even know what brought me on my knees. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing could have brought me on my knees but the Spirit of God. So as he said that word, I quickly went down my knees, tears rolling down my eyes. Mm. Like, there's something different yes. about about this message. There is something different that is happening to me. My heart lifted. As I knelt down, I couldn't even pray the prayer, even without saying anything. Tears wow. rolling, my heart was lifted. And as my heart lifted, my eyes opened. And I saw a, I saw a wall, a very tall wall in front of me. And as I said, in the name of Jesus, hmm. I was lifted wow. above that wall. And I cross the wall onto the other side and then my heart just opened up like you know like they opened up a door and something went in and calmness came from the top of my head you know all took to my feet i was just calm and i wow. knelt down there you know and all i could do was just weep all i could do the whole week of that same day starting from that day was just weep like I have never felt this way before in my life. What is this? What is it? So that gave me the drive. I started searching. I started studying the Bible. I can tell you right now, you know, that, you know, that period of time, I, I probably, you know, read the Bible in one month, the whole Bible. Wow. I, sat down, I taught the Bible. I was, I've never read the Bible before. We read, we read Bible in school, but this time, I read it and everything made sense. Yeah. Everything from Genesis to Revelation. I read the Bible like in one more. From Genesis to Revelation, it made a lot of sense. And from then on, I was like, okay, I think I have found something tangible. Oh. So that's how you know, my life was transformed. My life was changed. And you know, um, the Spirit of God has been wonderful ever since. Wow. Amen. Uh, mm. powerful power just uh, you know the media how powerful the media can be in, in yes. the midst of the first wow powerful yeah and yes. also, yeah it's originally from nigeria but uh, he lives in atlanta uh, in the united states now but so mike let's go back to uh, your growing days back in nigeria and then ultimately to libya and to Malta. how will you yeah. compare community uh, in back in nigeria to where you're living now in the, in the atlanta um Life back in Nigeria, it, it was um, then, then years back. I wouldn't say it's it's uh, it was too bad then. It wasn't that too bad. But you know, if you if you lived in Nigeria, you, you need direction. You need you will need somebody to direct you. I mean, coming from the background that I came from, you know, I needed I needed that direction in life. I needed somebody to direct me. I needed somebody to tell me, okay. Do it this way. Do it this. Way. I never mm. had any any kind of guidance. Mm. You know, uh, life life you know was was not bad because I still had my parents. I could still go here. You know, go here, get what I want here. Get, but there was still something missing. Yeah, uh, life life in Nigeria then was it was also difficult. It was also difficult in the sense that even now the people are still saying there is no job. It's been the same way ever since. Yeah. People finish school, they can't get a job, you know, and they keep roaming around the street. Now, a lot of crimes, you know, in Nigeria, then the crime rate was not that bad. But right now, the crime rate is, is, is really high. So coming from that background that I came from and got so good that I came to know the Lord, things began to change. Even while I was still in Nigeria, I started, you know, God, the Spirit of God started directing me, you know, go here move here. I remember there was a day uh, I was supposed to receive a, an information and that information um, 
came from the place where I was walking before, but I was going towards another direction. Right on the center of the road, the Spirit of God, the, the wind, the, there was a wind, a hand that turned me around. Even mm. without me, like, that mm. hand turned me around mm. and I had to go towards where I needed to receive that information. So, mm. but right now in, in America, comparing the, the way Nigeria was then, um, I would say it is better here. Um, but one has to be careful. Even in America, they, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of you know things that can uh, uh, throw away your attention if you are not careful. We've had a lot of Christians who came from Nigeria, and because they were not holding their faith strong, they yeah. came here. And before you knew it, they, you know their mm. their life was you know uh, mm. became something that we cannot talk about right now. But uh, uh, so life in America, life is good here. Um, there is job, you have opportunity to, to, to be in a church, to go to church and all that, uh, because it's also a Christian country. Everybody is welcoming, you know, we, we, we see everybody as the same, even though it's, it's, it's a diverse uh, community, you know, uh, people respect each other, you know, though there are some people who still hold this issue of uh, racism and all that stuff. But, in the, in the actual sense, wherever you are, individually or what, people will give you your respect. People see you for who you are. And they see you as, as, as a very, very intelligent person. Because for you to be able to make it to America, mm. <laughs> there, must have been, there must have been something, you know, in you or that you had that you mm. brought you into the country. Mm. Or they see you as somebody who, you know, you are intelligent, you are, you are, you are strong, you you have, you know, the attributes of which they're probably looking for, you know, in this country. So, uh, so I, I wouldn't say it's, it's that too bad here. It's life mm. is good, mm. but at the same time, one has to be careful, mm. you know, because there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of gang, you know, yeah. gang things, and there are a lot of shootings and all that. Yeah. But yeah. if you are coming from a very good Christian background, you know who you are in, in the Lord, then you 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 will even live even above those things and nothing can sway you easily. Amen. In, Amen. Uh -huh. Praise God. Amen. But when we talk about the spiritual sense, Pastor Micah, how will you say today? Because uh, you know, sometimes when we go on missions to African countries, we see the vibrancy, we see the dedication, the loyalty and all. And then we come back to the Western world, it's a little bit it's completely the opposite. So yes. why would you prefer the spiritual lifestyle back in the let's say Nigeria, let's say African countries to where you are now in the U.S. or, or the other European countries or uh, Western countries? Yeah, the, the, the spiritual lifestyle here, uh, I, if, I, if, I, if I rate it uh, properly, I would say it's, it's probably around 40, 35 to 40, you know, compared to Africa mm. or, or compared to other countries. Mm. But um, the, the, the thing is, the... The, the reason why it is like that is because of the, the, the America is a is a really is a developed country. It's a first world country, so people tend to give more credence mm. to other things than giving their their credence to the things of God. Yes, yes. See, because there, there is there's too many things that can keep you occupied. That's it. That's okay. it. Yeah. yeah. Traveling, people travel a lot. There are different resorts. Yeah. There are different things. Yeah. Technology is not even making it easier, even though technology is very good, but mm. it's not also making it easier. Uh, children will spend hours on their uh, PSI or whatever they call it and all that. And one of the problems, too, is there have been parents who um, did not take that time to mm. bring up their children yes. in the law properly. And there's also a lot of um, uh, children that came out from, you know, different, different parents. Like, you know, you have a, a, a man and a woman, they just, boom, they have to, and the man, <laughs> the man takes off. He never sees the child. He yeah. never takes care of the child. Yes. There are a lot of crime rates in the country. Why? Because even most children, when they start growing up, there is nobody who is there. No, no man 
in their family who is there to guide them properly. So because of that, when they go to school, they join all these gangs, and yeah. before you know it, their life is. So you find out that parents who are supposed to, you know, guide their family or their children spiritually, there is no figurehead to be able to do that. Yes. So you find out that even though people go to church, it's not as powerful as it should be. So now yeah. you find out that there are some people who came from Africa with a vibrancy and all that. Yes. If you go into some of their churches, you still see the same vibrancy. Amen. In the yeah, Amen. you still see it. But in general, and in other churches, you know, that is not that kind of African kind of, you know, you see a lot of, you know, people are quiet, people yeah. are, you know, you don't see. It. So it will really take the Spirit of God to break through mm. in some of the churches. Mm. And I think probably, as at the moment, a lot of people are beginning to understand, like, this situation that is going on li right now, a lot of people are now beginning to come for prayers, you know, yes. even though they are not doing that before. Yes. You know, yes. so there is a lot of God. Mm. You find that there have been a lot of men of God who came from America to uh, to Africa to Nigeria, bringing the word of God, and you know. Uh, but at the moment, things are not the way it used to be. In to those be. Days. Wow! 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 The other day, I was watching Maurice Salulo you know, ministering and all that. So I was like, wow, Maurice Salulo is still ministering powerfully. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching Benny He. You know, they are still ministering powerfully. But you still find out that there's been a lot of things that has kept people like, you know, yeah. they've been cold, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, and I'm not surprised that this, this pandemic came and it took people's lives yeah. so much in America, you know. So there's a lot of difference. Yeah. That is what I, I wanted to ask you, Pastor Mike. Uh, yeah. At this stage, with this pandemic right now going on in the world and everybody practically in the world, industries and companies and governments are all affected one way or the other. What is God saying to our generation? What is God saying to you or to us as a, as a generation, as a nation, as a, as a worldwide uh, people? What is God saying to us at this time, Pastor Mike? I believe, I believe God, God is saying to us to seek his presence. We need his presence more than we ever needed it before. Mm. It's not like the presence of God is not there. Mm. But we, we, we need God's presence more yes. than we need any other thing. Wow. More than we need the comfort. More than we need the, the good cars and, and, and the good life we think, you know, we have been offered or we have in America here right now. We need God's presence, but we need to key in more. Yeah. This time we are in, it's not, like I was saying before, it's not the time to run after one prophet, to run after this mm. miracle. God mm. can give you that miracle right inside your house. Hallelujah. But you, need to, you need to seek him. Yes. You need to seek him. We need to, this, this generation that we are in, th yeah. things are finally closing up. Mm. Mm. This generation is gradually closing up. But God is telling the people, you need to come closer, yeah. draw nearer to me this mm. time. It is, not, it is not a time to begin to look for the best house, the best no. thing. And I no. know God can give us those things. He can. But he can only give it to us when we are more in depth into him, when we are seeking him daily, yes. when we are asking his presence to fill us daily. You know, God can fill you today, but tomorrow, if you are not seeking him, you know, the things he wants to do, he will not be able to do it. So this present generation, I think God is calling us back to him again. Hallelujah. He wants us to come back. He wants us to go back to what we, we, we used to know that mm. God is in our lives. Especially mm. those who are in the world who don't even know. Like mm. I said, a, a lot of people are not calling for prayers. Yeah. They like we had prayer, we had prayer meeting uh, around 6 p.m. today. People, the line was jammed. I could hear lots of voices. Wow. You know, people, people that we don't even know before. A lot of people are coming for prayer, asking for prayer because they are now realizing that the rate of the way things are going now, yeah. it is only it is God. God. <laughs> it is only wow. God. Yeah, it is only God who yeah. can protect people, who can save people. Yes. And as I was leading the prayer, I was telling them, look. They say, oh, your immune system, if you have a good immune system, you know, the virus will not be able to, <laughs> to do anything. To I said, look, 
It is only God who can ginger your immune system. Hallelujah. Drink whatever you want to drink, eat whatever you want to drink. It's so but good. if the Spirit hey. of God is not hey. quickening it's your so inner man Come on. the way it should, yes. you know, if, if one is not careful, you may be a Christian anyway. Yes. You may be whatever you want to be. Mm. But if you are not allowing the prince of God to do what he wants to do, uh, the Spirit of God to ginger and quicken the inner man to be strong, yes. Yes. one can catch the signal even without knowing it. So true, yes. You know? So I think this time we we just need God's presence. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. we need God's presence. No mm. matter what anybody saying, mm. Mm. we have to seek God and ask for God's presence. Forget about the, the pleasure that is everywhere, and it is what the devil is doing. Is what he's using to try to yeah. draw people away from God's presence. Yeah, yeah. So true. So true. Pastor Mike, when, when we were in Malta, we worked together very well. God did a lot of wonderful things, healings, deliverance, many, many, many miracles. And uh, looking back now, Pastor Mike, what would you say is the most important need that, uh, you know, the, the market needs for their life? Because you see, everybody is looking for one thing or the other, the houses, the gold, the jewelry. So what is the greatest need of mankind today, Pastor Mike? I think the greatest need is salvation salvation we men and women everywhere needs to be saved mm. they need they need jesus in their life mm. because without jesus no miracle somebody can say well um, um i don't know jesus before uh, but when you prayed i received my healing yes uh, but yes. you still need jesus in your yes. life to keep yes. that healing yeah. because if jesus doesn't come in somebody's life Jesus went about doing good, the Bible says. Ah, hallelujah. He, he lay hands on people, he healed them. Some people, he tell them, go and testify. Some people, we tell them, go sin no more. And, but in this, in this particular time, looking back to, you know, Malta and now, you know, salvation is the key. Hallelujah. Salvation is a key. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just the miracle, because now people mm -hmm. are pursuing miracle back and mm -hmm. forth. Yes. But if you have salvation, you can you miracles will happen in your life. Wow. Sometimes God will, will 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 do things in your life even before you know it. Like I was yeah. telling the group tonight, I said God fights on sin battles. Hallelujah. It's not it's not only until you you receive a, uh, somebody gives you thousands of dollars or somebody comes lay hand on you and you you are you are healed, which is good. But God fights your battles when even when you don't know huh. and you go somewhere and things just open up for you and you'll be like oh, what just happened what no huh. god huh. had already taken care of it in the spirit by himself even yeah. without you interfering Amen. even without anybody saying anything god goes ahead because he himself promised say i will go before you to prepare your way and i will send my angels to bring you to that place, that place where he has, has, you know, prepared for each and every one as a believer. So I believe that looking back and now, salvation mm. is still the key. Mm. 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 Believing That's in the true. Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved is wow. still the key. Amen. 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 I, I, I will never forget the times when we were mortal. And uh, we used to go for early morning prayer meetings. I remember you coming. Oh, you those, those, those days. <laughs> no <Those laughs> early morning prayer. It was, it was, it was powerful. Uh, in fact, I, le I learned a lot from that. Mm. I, in fact, it was, it was good. That, those early morning prayer was, it was so enriching. Mm. You know, because it, it actually, I believe it, it opened everybody up. You know, those yeah. who were attending them, it opened us up. I mean, there was peace everywhere. You yeah. know, the word of God was coming forth strong. You know, That's when it. we did the service, the preaching of the word was so mm. powerful. The mm. ministration was so good. The music was so good. I, I will never forget more time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget. In fact, there are some things I wish I did <laughs> that I go back there. You know, I, I, I believe God will do it. I still want to go back to more time. You wow. know, part of that fellowship again yes you know, yes the truth so true. So true. Yes. what would you say today because today prayer has become such a burden to people people today don't want to pray you know no. i mean 
Look at the sacrifice you made at that time, coming every early in the morning, driving there, you know, leading prayer, leading worship, doing a lot of yeah. things for the kingdom. But today, you, you, people just like the glamour. They are not interested in going on their knees and waking mm -hmm. up early. What is happening, Pastor Mike? I think what, what is happening to, my, to the best of my knowledge is um, when, when, when you, you encourage people to pray, it's good to encourage people to pray on their own. And also, whoever is helping other people to pray, be an example to them. Be an example to them. Like yeah. I said earlier, there are a lot of things in the world now that is making people not to pray. Now, I will tell you one. In America here, the way people go after the worldly things is, is really, really hard. Even some believers, you have to get up so early in the morning to go to work. You come back, you are so tired. Some people walk all around. Yeah. Why? Because they want it. They want to own a house. Yeah. And when you own a house, you have to pay mortgage. Mortgage. You have to, you know. So your mortgage every month. You have, if you don't pay for the two months, you that house will be gone. They take it from you. People want to drive good cars. People want to, you know, a lot of things. So you find out that the rate of the circle, the way things are going. If you are not careful, even if, as a believer, your prayer life will probably dwindle. And I, I will not be, um, I will be honest with you. At the time, it, it really did affect me because I found out that very early in the morning, I have, so what I had to do was I devised a, a time for myself mm, mm. that once it's between this time, I'm going to wake up. Hallelujah. That's it. Even if it is one hour, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, I'm going to make sure that I give myself to prayer before I live there. And I've been doing that ever since. And not only that, being in the church, you know, yeah. prayer yeah. meetings. Yeah. People have to be in the church for prayer meetings. You know, you cannot allow your, your daily activity to always, you know, make you. So <laughs> when it's time for service, for prayer meetings, people have to go for prayer meetings. And mm -hmm. our prayer meetings must, must, must come with power. Mm -hmm. We must pray effectively. People must, must, you know, use the word effectively to lead people in prayer and encourage people to pray on their own. And I That's also it. find that as a man of God, if you always pray for people, pray for people, now it's good. But if you only be the one praying for people and the people are not praying for themselves, I... they only will be with, oh, until I see pastor so, so, and so. Yeah. Before yeah. I pray, until yeah. I see pastor so, so and so before I pray, you find out that you don't even know whether you are going to see the pastor in the next two, three days. Exactly. He himself is busy doing other things, running around for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And you will never pray. Yeah. And I yeah. think that is also affecting people. Yeah. It's affecting That's people. And I find out that over here, you know, uh, like the, the, the church where I go to, we encourage people to pray on their own. Yeah. There are prayer meetings. Prayer time. Very like even when we are, what we are doing now, there is there's prayer online. We do prayer online. We do online prayer. Every morning, 6 a.m., we do online prayer. We do mm. online prayer 6 p.m. We do mm. online prayer 12 a.m. So we're doing that just to encourage people Every, to yeah. keep praying. Because we find out that if you don't do that, all these things that are around people, people will not pray. And the devil now have a way of attacking people Mm. And making people not to even want to pray at all because they'll mm. be like, oh, <laughs> even the little I pray, nothing is happening. So they yeah. get discouraged, they begin to draw back and all that. So um, I think that's that's my experience, you know, mm. so far. Yes. Mm. 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 Well, joining us all the way from Atlanta is uh, Pastor Michael Sakwe, and it's uh, about uh, nine. Uh, I mean, 8.42 p.m. in, uh, yeah, 8.42, yeah, okay. And they said 10.42 p.m. here in Australia. So we are being uh, blessed by this man of God whom I've known for a very long time. Pastor Mike, uh, we, we go back again to history, to, to the times when the Lord was doing a lot of things. You remember evangelism, going to yes. stick water, the Valletta, yes. the word yes. of God, by the love of Christ. You were very instrumental. You know, leading people to cry. Why is it today we don't find that heart anymore to go out for evangelism, Pastor Mike? 
Um, I think uh, it still comes down to um, the point that people are too engaged and concerned with too, too much of worldly things. People are still concerned uh, about what I will eat, what I will drink, and what I will wear. Just like the Bible says it. Mm. And the devil is not making it any easier, you know, because he's busy pumping a lot of a lot of things, you know, trying to make people, you know, do things that, you know, will probably say, oh, I will let me better my life in this way. And when it comes to evangelism, you find out that people are lacking. Most churches are lacking. Yeah. The same thing we did in Malta, that was very tremendous. I remember at one of the squares, we had an outreach. Yeah, that's in, there, was, yeah. there was an outreach we had out there. Yeah. I can't remember the name of that square. Amroon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. we had a very powerful outreach, and God moved mightily in that outreach. Mm. Mm. That was a very, a very powerful, powerful moment that I, 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 don't, I don't forget in my life. God moved mightily. And so over here, we, we've done the same thing too. We've done the same thing. We've gone out for a value. But, you know, there are some churches that it is difficult. I don't know why it is, mm. but, you know, recently people are not really going out to evangelize. People are not sharing the gospel like, you know, we used to do it in those days. Yeah. You know, until, until they begin to encourage more of that, you know. Uh -huh. We need to encourage more of that. Even in mm. our own particular time, we need to encourage yeah. more people. We need to, you know, let people go out and, and, and evangelize, you know. Uh, the church where I am, we, we do go out and evangelize. We have teams who go out and evangelize. You know, every time we have a program, we have to go out and evangelize. But what we are doing mostly now, you know, because there is a lot of media presence now, media mm. awareness. Mm. So even people, we can evangelize through the media now. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Now that it's even people are finding it difficult to go out and evangelize, maybe because of work, because of this or that, we can evangelize through the media. We can, uh, share, yeah. we can share whatever, you know, that is going on. We can share our service time, the ministration, you know, uh, even what we are doing now, we can share to people when they hear it, they hear the testimonies, they hear what God is doing, and that also can bring them to God. So I think uh, presently, yeah, that is what is really happening within this particular time, media mm. evangelism, which is also yes. very powerful. Exactly. You know, I came to know the I came to know the Lord through media evangelism. Yeah, through yeah, media that's right. That's how I that's came right. to God. You yeah, know, nobody preached to me. I've never heard wow. anybody preach to me. Wow. I've never heard any preaching. You know, only Jehovah Witnesses come to give you. <laughs> but but immediately they gave it to me. I just <laughs> I put it once. I never read it. Yeah. But it was, it, it was through media ministration that I came yeah. to know Jesus. Cool. And it's yeah. still it's still powerful today. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Well, at the time, Pastor Mike, you lived in uh, Benghazi in Libya, and I've been to Benghazi and I've been to some of the. And when you look back today, Pastor Mike, what is going on in Libya and Benghazi, especially the the, the the war and all the things that are happening there right now, how does it make you feel knowing that you once lived there, you once were part of a church there? How does that make you feel, Pastor Mike? I feel. I feel. I. I would. <laughs> what I, I feel sad. Let me just use it that way. I feel very sad because uh, God had God really used us when we were yeah. in Libya. Mm. God used us. We a lot of there is still there is still a, a brother that we all were in Libya together. He he lives in Israel. We we used to chat now. We, you know, he used to send me, he's in Israel now. He's from Ghana. Mm. You know. And I've met one or two other people, even right here in the States, who knew me then. I was so surprised. I was at war and then yeah. <laughs> This, this person, you know, I believe also because of the work of God that we did in Libya, this yeah. person has been in the church because it was only in the church you could have known me. So he <laughs> just called my name. He said, Pastor yeah. Mike. I turn around. Nobody knew me as Pastor Mike. <laughs> he called my name, Pastor Mike. I turned around and looked at him. <laughs> I looked at him. <laughs> <laughs> this man, <laughs> have you come to expose me? <laughs> so I turn around, I look at him. I'm like, okay, I recognize the face he made him. And then he told me his name. I say, oh, do you still remember me? I say, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Wow. He said, and then he met, he met, he said, the church in Benghazi. I'm like, wow. 
Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> so he, he just went on. He, yeah. he was the one who started even testifying. Oh. So but because of the present situation now, I feel so bad. I was yeah. asking Pastor Fosu the other day. I believe you, yeah. you, 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 you hear from Pastor. I was asking him, so I said, What's, have you heard anything about Libya? Because I don't have any contact with anybody over there. I would be so glad if I could get contact with people over there, but I think because of the war mm. and the situation that is going there, I don't even know if the church is still, you know, know. Going. like he yeah. said, the church is still there. They are still, you know, um, wow. the people are still bleeding. Wow. You know, because I believe wherever the work of God is, it never, it never dies. That's true. It, never, That's it true. will never die. But, That's true. But God really used us. Yes. You know, God worked mightily in Libya. And I traveled the whole of Libya. Mm. Even in the in the in the midst of all the arrest, in the midst of all the uh, problems, even before the war. I traveled to Benghazi, I traveled to Sert, I traveled to um, um, the, the remotest part of Benghazi, uh, uh -huh. Libya. I traveled to Tripoli, you know, I moved around. I didn't move around because, you know, <laughs> it was fun. No, I was visiting churches, the churches that were there. I was, you know, on behalf of the church in Benghazi, I was visiting churches and we were also, wow. going, you know, into remote places, preaching yes. with people. You know, those of our brethren who were there in, 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 in Saba, in yes, Serb, you know, yeah, we were there ministering, you know, wow. ministering to them, preaching to them, telling them to come to God. We know the country we are in. We all came to look for greener pastors, but we should not forget God. It's only God who can sustain us even in that difficult situation. Mm. Mm. So, so I, I remember tw twice or three times I was arrested in the midst of going around, you know, visiting people, visiting brothers, visiting brethren, you know, because I was working with the church full time then, you know, I was all all day round visiting, you know, from one. So in the course uh, of visiting, I was arrested one time, yeah. arrested the second time. Yeah. I was thrown to to the uh, border border post of of ben, uh, Libya, you know. But but God brought me out. I remember there was there was one of um this this particular time that I got arrested and sent to jail. I was in jail in one of their 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 camps, you know, deadly camp. I had to raise up. A, a prayer, an emergency prayer team in that prison. In that camp, wow. praying. Yes, we started praying. And everybody in that prison, whether you're a Muslim, or everybody started praying. <laughs> everybody. Because I looked around. The first night I came, I was quiet. I was peaceful. There was no fear, you know, because I knew God was going to do something, you know, marvelous. God was going to do a miracle. Because I know that that place is not the place where he wants me to be, you know. So in the midst of that, the first night, the second night, when I woke up, God spoke to me in that prison. And immediately I received that word, you know. I started encouraging them. I said, we should pray. Let's pray. God is going to bring us out. God has already told me we are coming out of it. Amen. So they, they were looking at me like, so those who knew me, who came from Benghazi, who knew that, oh, uh, Pastor Mark. So they joined me and we started praying. We start so every morning, every night we will <laughs> fire prayer. Whoa. And you know what happened? We get we got a word in that prison mm. from one of the prison warders or you know those police people that Gaddafi then had told them to close down every camp that year. Gaddafi gave an instruction. Three days, four days after we prayed, yeah. when God spoke to me, God said something to me that we are coming out of that place. Hey. That gave hey. an instruction yes. that every camp where they have arrested and kept people should be closed down. So you know what they did? They started bringing cars. They said, okay, what's going to happen? And we will bring all these uh, buses. Uh, so those who are willing to enter the bus and go home can now enter. So before you knew him, one man just came. He said, everybody who wants to leave, all you need to pay is pay so so and so amount. And then, so immediately, we paid that money. He brought his boss, took every one of us. When he came to the garage center, he just opened the door and said, you know what? You all can go. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. He said he's not going anywhere. He's selecting everyone wow. else. From there. So wow. immediately from there, I called the church. The church they sent they sent some funds to me and all that. I took. You can you can imagine. I flew from Saba back to Bengal. My goodness! Wow. I flew. I did not take the but I flew from there back to Bengal without being stopped, without being asked any question. Nobody stopped me. Nobody asked me. And I think when I look at the play, there were just few Africans who were inside the play. So sometimes you need to do things by faith. You, fear has no place at all. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, um, but right now, the war has already made everything it's so a lot of things. Yeah. You know, everything has gone upside down. That's I don't it. Know. Did you, did, I don't know if you remember Pastor Chirman. Oh, yeah, I do. Yes, yes. I heard, I heard he was shot. Uh, he was shot during the, the, the war. He, they were hiding in one place, and um, he decided to come out to go do something. I don't know, but Pastor Fosu was telling me that. Mm. So immediately he came out, you know, because there were people everywhere, all these people, you know, the soldiers. and So immediately they came out of the, their hiding place. They probably thought maybe he's a rebel or something. Yeah. They just opened fire on him. Oh, you no. Know? You know. It was so it was so painful. I, when I heard that, I, I felt so bad. Yeah. I know Pastor Pastor Collins is still in Tripoli. I is he in Tripoli? Tripoli. Yeah. Union, Union Church or something like that? Union Church. Union wow. Church. Pastor yeah. Pastor Collins. Yeah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pastor I Collins mean, is in, he's with the Union Church. I think yeah. he joined the Union Church and all that. So um, I mean, but, but praise God, you know, I mean, it's, the church is still there. I believe the church is still there. Um, I've not gotten real worried about how they are faring and all that. Yes. But uh, we'll thank God for what he has done. God has really been. Uh -huh. and, I, I, I forget the late uh, Tony, Tony Seke. Tony Seke, oh, yeah. wonderful yeah. man of God. Wow. Wonderful man of God. Every time, you know, you know what brings me back to my senses sometimes? Yeah. Every time when I remember that man, I go on my knees, I start begging God. I say, God, please, <laughs> preserve my life. Preserve yes. me. The only thing I can ask you now is just preserve my life until wow. when it is really time, you know, like, wow. because looking at that man so young at that age, yes. I don't know what happened. It really touches my heart so much. It, yeah. it, it disturbs me that a, a man of God as young as that, we'll see you know, you. Just, you know, the, uh, nobody knows, but hey, yeah. What, what yeah. can we say to God? You know, what can we say to God? That's it. Well, you got great friends like uh, Pastor Chima, Pastor David the Babweke, uh, Pastor Fusu, and all these wonderful people that have come out of Libya that are doing wonderful things for the kingdom of God. So we salute them, and uh, you know, uh, Pastor Mike, what will you say to them if they are watching you right now? Well. <laughs> I, I will, I will, I will wish that we can, you know, <laughs> we can do a, a big crusade, you know, uh, like, like come together and, you know, just carry the gospel and just run with it, you know, you know, just, just run with it. Even if it's going to be for, for, for one week, we go from, you know, we can go from one place to another, maybe go to Ghana, do a crusade, you know, f do a crusade here, do a crusade, you know, just you know, reach out to people. You know, know. As men of God, we come together again and pray, just like we used to pray in those days. And I know God answered our prayers. Amen. God, God we live by prayer. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, we live by prayer. You know, wow. so if if God, you know, makes it possible for us to be again, I know it's going to be a wonderful time. We run again with the gospel, do it like yeah. we used to do it before, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, last year, I, I saw Pastor Chima in, in the UK, and I yes. think two years back or three years back, I saw Pastor Fusu in Ghana. So yes. I have I, I've met Pastor Bubuke in the Malta. So the people are still going on with the gospel. The good work you people started in Libya is still going on, and the people are standing firm. And Pastor Fusu is still ministering. Pastor David, yes. and I think that that's a credit to the, the to the dedication, the sacrifice, and the desire for that ministry been, people had there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've heard, you've heard from Pastor Babweke. I've not heard from Babweke for a while. It's, it's been a while. A but when we were mortal, I saw, I okay. worked together, but yeah, but yeah, it's been a while since I've seen him. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Praise um, God. Um, so, so you've been that for a while too. No, no. I, I, I was there two, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sure they are still, they are still, they are still going oh, on yeah. strong. Oh yeah, God is, yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah. God is doing wonderful there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But Praise our God. time is fast spent. But just one question, Pastor Mike. If there's anybody watching you right now, say, you know what? I want to have an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to follow the Lord. What will you say to that, such a person right now, Pastor Mike? Well, I will say to such a person to. Um, Give themselves fully to God. Give their hearts to God. Because in the present time, in the season that we are now, there is nothing that makes sense anymore than yeah. the presence of God. Mm. Every other thing we are seeing, you know, we are hearing the pandemic and all that. We know that, you know, the, the, the age is closing out. Mm. But the only thing that remains constant, that remains constant, that we can rely on, mm. is the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. That is the only thing that we can rely on right now. Mm. Because yeah. without that, as this age is closing out gradually, gradually, everything is going to be wiped away. It is only Jesus. So I will encourage people who are watching me right now, mm. you know, wherever they are, or even those who have given them their, their lives to Christ, they should go ahead and begin to make sure that they give their life to Jesus. You know, rededication is also very important. We should rededicate ourselves. Mm. We should, you know, come back to God. We should seek God's presence. Mm. And those who have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ, they need to give their heart to Jesus. They need to mm. ask Jesus to come live inside of their heart. Hallelujah. And they need to release themselves and say, Jesus, I release everything to you. Come and live within me. Dwell wow. in me. Wow. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I confess that you are Lord of my life, mm. you know, in the mm. name of Jesus. And before you know it, you know, that the person's life is transformed. You know, God begins to do a new thing in their life. So I will wow. encourage people that this is what we need at this time. Everyone everywhere should give their life to Jesus. Wow. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Man. Well, Pastor Man, maybe you want to pray for such a person right now. I know it's getting to about 9 p.m. in your time there. So uh, I want to pray for such a person right now to give their life to Christ. Yes. So wherever you are watching this program, I just want you to close your eyes and we are going to pray. And I just want you to pray this prayer after me. And say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I open up the doors of my heart. And I ask you to come in and live with me. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Because your word says that if I believe in you and if I receive you, then you will come dwell in me and you will give me life in abundance. So tonight I open up the doors of my heart. It says, when any man hears my voice and opens up, I will come and I will dwell in him. So tonight I open up my heart. Come inside of me. Live inside of me. Be my Lord and my Savior in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I pray for you tonight, you that are hearing, you that are watching, wherever you are, and in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. Transform your life as you give your life to Jesus today. I believe that God is going to do mighty things for you. I believe that God is transforming your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Wow, Pastor Mike, it's been a wonderful time chatting with you. And uh, thank Praise you for God. spending time with us. I know it's late for you, but thank you so much. We appreciate that. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. So until we we'll meet again. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Thank Hallelujah. you. Well, okay. We'll be right back just after this. Amen. <laughs>